Whether or not it's the Antichrist, it doesn't matter. Whether or not he's committed adultery, it doesn't matter. Whether or not he prays or has a form of godliness, whether or not he means what he's saying when he lays his hand on the Bible is irrelevant to us. Mm. We're not celebrating an earthly king. We're celebrating the fact that this coronation, at this coronation, millions are going to get the gospel. So we're there to celebrate for a different reason. Ray Comfort, it's great to have you back on Charisma News. The last time that we talked, we talked about the revivals that are happening, and you answered the question, it's only revival if, and uh, that video has done very, very well, and I definitely recommend that to everybody watching that you check that out. We'll put a link in the description to check that out again, but there's something really interesting that Ray and I were talking about or starting to talk about that he has got a phenomenal outreach to London regarding the new king, King Charles, uh, which is going to be in early May. So, Ray, it's great to be able to talk with you about the plans that God has given you for this coronation of an earthly king. But there's, uh, we want the heavenly king to be the king of people's hearts. So, Ray, welcome. It's always good to be invited back. It's a, it's a good sign. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Yeah, let me share what happened. And, uh, you know, you said that God has given me. I'm not totally uh, convinced that God gave it to me. It was an idea I thought of, and God's put his blessing on it. But let me just share what happened. Uh, about six months ago, I began thinking how when Charles is crowned on May the 6th, he's going to reach out his hand and lay it on a Bible and swear to uphold the biblical truth of salvation by grace through faith. He's going to be the defender of the faith. He's going to carry an orb which is a little globe. It's a golden globe with diamonds and pearls all over it. It has a cross on the top, and it's symbolic of Jesus Christ's reign over the whole earth. He's going to hold a scepter as uh, David held and as uh, Solomon held. He's going to be anointed with oil. There's all sorts of things. I think there's a, a 10 biblical things that are going to happen uh, during the coronation, and it's going to be witnessed by literally hundreds of millions around the world. Hmm. And so I began thinking, boy, it'd be great to have a little track printed with Charles on the front and the gospel on the back. And we could give it to people who are lining the streets of London because there's going to be millions. If you look at the coronation of Queen Elizabeth in 1953, you've just never seen crowds like it. And I thought, mm. boy, that'd be a great idea. So I made a video and I sent it to my team. And just after I sent the video, I received an email from a gentleman and he, he just said, what are you working on? And so I sent him the video and he sent the ministry two hundred thousand dollars wow yeah it's better than a wet fleece and then, <laughs> and then i shared the video with uh, someone else and they sent fifty thousand dollars and i sent somebody else and they sent a hundred thousand dollars so what we did is we got something like four or five million of these printed and it's now crept up to nearly 15 million and we're making them available free of charge hmm. no cost for the tract or for the shipping what wow. we're doing is we're offering free shipping of these tracks to Australia, New Zealand, Europe, England, United States, and Canada. Hmm. We didn't have Canada on the list because we didn't have an agency in Can uh, Canada. Eh? And uh, so we couldn't swing the printing over there and the cheaper shipping. But the Canadians got really upset, so we decided <laughs> to include them. So we bit the bullet and we're sending them, despite the high shipping, to Canadians that want them free of charge. So free tracks by the thousands, free shipping, and people are going to grab this as memorabilia. Hmm. Uh, the church isn't interested in Charles. You know, as, as Christians, we have our king, but the sure. world certainly is. In fact, the secular world knows that royalty is like celebrity on steroids. Hmm. They're going to follow this thing. When the queen died, all the oh, networks yeah. got what they were doing, and they, they recorded it, and they broadcast it live, and they were made to talk about what was going on. I remember mm. CBS uh, were commentating as the coffin was going along, and there was this golden orb with a cross on the top. Well, it was like an elephant in the room, and they had mm. to say what it was. Yeah. The, the symbolic of the, the, of the queen's authority that she had given to her from God, and it was symbolic of the reign of Jesus Christ over the whole earth. So... When they broadcast this on the networks, they're going to have to comment on the fact he's now re he's laying his hand on the Bible and he swears to uphold the biblical truth of salvation, truth of salvation by grace through faith without works. So hmm. it's a wonderful opportunity, and I'm so pleased that so many, especially in the U.S., have 
run with this. We've sold, sold. We've given away, I think, four million. We've had to have another wow. four million printed. In the United Kingdom, 1,800 Christians have committed to go to London and give out the tracks. 500 Christians from the US are flying wow. over to London to give out the tracks. And there's people coming from Australia, New Zealand, and Europe. And never before in the history of the world have we seen so much interest in something that is godly. They're going to mm. have to watch a two-hour service talking about God, Jesus, the Bible, and have wow. it explained to them. Also, yeah. John may mention, I, I wrote a book called Defender of the Faith, 10 Weird Things That Are Happening During the Coronation. Hmm. We had 500,000 printed, and we gave those away. They're, being, they're all gone now. They're being given away, and we're still giving the tracks away. So we're super excited about it. Yeah, so you're taking something that is a cultural uh, event, a cultural experience that the world is going to share uh, because, I mean, it's been, what, since 1953, since the last time we've had a coronation of an earthly king of, of England. I mean, there's been other ones, but the, I think that's the biggest king uh, that, we're, that we've been able to see. Yeah, and I just want to say here, if I may jump in, yeah, this is going to be a splendor like the world has never seen it's a yeah. king in a gold coach there's going to be celebrities there's going to be presidents so it's it's the world's best they can do when it comes to glory and splendor mm. but for the world it's going to be breathtaking it's going to yeah. be something they'll never forget i was in new zealand when the queen visited new zealand and i was open air preaching where i usually preach in the local square right in the heart and that's when the queen walked through and crowds suddenly showed up, and you couldn't even see over the crowd. There were so many there, but I had my preaching ladder, and so I stood on the ladder, <clears throat> and I'm a little fella, and I was able to see above the heads of everyone what was going on, hmm. and it took my breath away to see the queen walking along, <clears throat> excuse me, and a a sea of photographers walking backwards, going click 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 click, click as she walked, and as she walked past, the crowd called out, "God save the queen." Now, I don't mm. know if you've ever been in a crowd, a football crowd of like 80,000 people, and they roar. Oh, yeah. And it's something spiritual that you don't get when you're at home watching it on a big screen. You don't feel the atmosphere. Mm. And it's something magical that God's put in human beings when we praise something spiritual happens. Well, people are going to experience that, uh, millions of them in London. And so when we give them this, it's going to be a pleasant looking thing. It's going to be memorabilia. It's a yeah. keep something they can take home with them. And it has the gospel on the back. So millions are going to get this gospel track. Yeah. And I mean, Queen Elizabeth has been the the figure on the on the British pound or all these uh, basically any Commonwealth currency, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. Right. Um, so it does. Does new currency need to be minted, minted uh, with King Charles? Is that yes? Like, it's, all, it's all being done. It's mm -hmm. all being done, and so what you're doing is not just a, um, it's is not just a creative thing. It's actually going along with what's what people are going to be spending in the near future. This looks like a fifty pound note in England. It has mm. everything about it. It's it's not counterfeit. My graphic right. artist said nothing on that is real. He's just grabbed portions, put them together, and it has the appearance of being like a 50 pound note. It's not deceitful. People love it. Oh, yes. We've away, we, we print million dollar bills all the time with gospel messages on it. And yeah. people know there's no such thing as a million dollar bill. So they're not being deceived. Right. And so they'll take it and they'll treasure it. So, like yeah. I said, we're super excited. We're going to live stream the whole thing from London. We've got a really good host who does 200 voices. He's a. He does uh, all sorts of characters and okay. uh, 200 of them. He was on Australia's most talented. His name is Ben Price and he's a good friend, loves the Lord with a passion. So he's going to host from London. Mm -hmm. We're going to run it through our studios here in California for the whole outreach. So we're super excited about that too. And may, let me give the address before I forget for people yes, to get please. free track for free shipping. Livingwaters.com forward slash London. Livingwaters.com forward slash London. I'll make sure to put that in the uh, in the description below and up on the screen here, so that people can see that and, and get a hold of that. Um, one thing that I think is really interesting, you, we're, we've talked about uh, a little bit about uh, you know Queen Elizabeth um, and the experience that that you saw, uh, but she was somebody that was a defender of the faith. Um, that she was she was very um, she loved the church. She loved she loves Jesus. Um, 
King Charles, there's uh, there's some rumors or there's some speculation that he is not as favorable uh, towards towards the faith as we know it, but he is going to be the leader of the Anglican Church. Um, some even say that he, I speculate that he might be somebody uh, that the Bible talks about. Can you talk about that? You started to almost whisper when you said it. <laughs> The Antichrist, and a lot of people think he's the Antichrist. <clears throat> he's, he loves Islam, believe it or not. He's been over to the Middle East many times. Uh, he has a form of godliness. Um, I don't think he's born again. He doesn't have the fruits of being born again. So we're not saying that. Is he the Antichrist? Well, time will tell, like with revivals. Um, are we commending him? Uh, absolutely not. It's like Paul in Athens, Acts 17. Mm. When he stood up and preached to the Athenians, he quoted Greek, sinful, pagan, blasphemous poets, hmm. godless people. What did he do that for? Paul, are you crazy? You're aligning, you're aligning yourself with these by quoting them. No, no. He was using those poets as a bridge to reach his hearers. And that's all we're doing with Charles. Whether or not it's the Antichrist, it doesn't matter. Whether or not he's committed adultery, it doesn't matter. Whether or not he prays or has a form of godliness, whether or not he means what he's saying when he lays his hand on the Bible is irrelevant to us. Hmm. We're not celebrating an earthly king. We're celebrating the fact that this coronation, at this coronation, millions are going to get the gospel. So we're there to celebrate for a different reason. Yeah. But it will be fascinating to watch this take place. You know, we're quick to judge as human beings, we judge by outward appearances, but God obviously judges the heart. So we can look at this, all these robes and, and staffs and laying hand on the Bible and, and kind of weird traditional music. We can say, mm -hmm. oh, it's just a form of godliness, but we don't know the hearts of those who are involved. We don't know if they're sincere when they you know, lay their hand on the Bible. So we just have to wait and see. Because yeah. uh, we don't want to be prejudiced and, and miss out on this, this wonderful opportunity to reach the lost because we're freaking out because Charles is the Antichrist. We have, n have nothing to do with him. And believe me, there haven't been hundreds of comments on a YouTube channel, but literally probably thousands have said, I am so disappointed in you, Ray Comfort. What are you doing? He's the Antichrist. What are you aligning yourself with him for? No, we're not. <laughs> We're just using this as a springboard or a bridge to reach the millions that are going to hell. We care about them, and this is going to be effective in reaching them. Absolutely. You know, I, I love how uh, the angel of the Lord came to to Joshua, and uh, and he <laughs> Joshua said, are you for us or against us? And the angel of the Lord said, neither. I'm the captain of the, I'm the host of the, or I am the captain of the angel armies. Mm -hmm. And so basically, we need to be on God's side, not trying to pull God onto our side. So whether Charles is the Antichrist or not, uh, it doesn't matter. You are taking to the streets to reach the lost for Jesus Christ, who is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Prince of Peace. And he's the one that does that needs our worship, that we need to give him our worship. Uh, Boy, so you're stirring me up, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, just I'm just finishing a video lining up those 10 things that are going to happen during the service and climaxing climaxing it i've said exactly almost word for word what you have said this symbolism that we're seeing with charles doing all these different things in this church service is all a type of what's coming the king of kings the lord of lords and all of it and all its splendor with a gold coach and the crowds yelling and nothing but a very very faded shadow of the real thing when Jesus Christ comes as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And what I've done at the end of that, when I say that, of his kingdom, there'll be no end, are born in Handel's Messiah. And it just is so stirs the soul and gives goosebumps because mm -hmm. we've got a kingdom that's coming that won't be removed. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. You know, Ray, you've got to be so excited to be able to go to this event and to be there on the streets. Uh, what are you what are you looking forward to most? I'm not even going. What? This is unbelievable. Yes, I've, I've, uh, I've like I've mustered this army as a general, and I'm not going to battle. You guys go into battle. There's a reason for it. Um, often when I do an interview, uh, people will say, "Ray, have you got any last words?" And I say, "Look, when you're coming up to 74, that has connotations. Last words." Um, but as a Christian, 
death has lost its sting, but there's certain things happen when you reach this age. And my wife isn't in the health that she normally was mm -hmm. when she was younger. She's got, you know, nothing serious, but blood sugar problems. She gets dizzy and stuff like that. And I really don't want to leave her with an annoying dog for a week while I'm mm -hmm. over enjoying fellowship in London. I would love to be there. I'd give her right arm, but I, I, I know I've got my wife to honor and I want to be with her. And so we're going to link up with this live stream, but uh, I'm not going and there's a tear in my eye when I say that. Yeah, but you are taking care of the, the first ministry that God's called you to, and that's your wife. And so yes, that right. is, you are actually doing things in the order that God has called you as a husband, as a man of God to do. And, but you have equipped people and you are sending them uh, with the blessing and with the tools that they can do more than what you could do if you were there because you've trained them and equipped them and sent them out. So you're making disciples, Ray. This is great. I love it. I do. I really enjoy it. And I'm so excited that so many have responded and, and not got silly about Charles being the Antichrist and seen that there's something more important here. We've forgotten that the world's going to hell. And uh, if death isn't bad enough, hell is a horror beyond words. And there are some that say hell isn't eternal, it's, you know, lake of fire. Or stuff. So what? Whatever you believe, just go for it. Warn every man you may present him perfect in Christ. And as I've often said, we're like doctors with a cure to cancer. We cannot but speak that which we've seen and heard. And, and as I said before, there's never been a precedent like this in history where literally hundreds of people are going to church. The world is going to church. Mm. And so we've got to take advantage of that. And so we are. In an upside down world, there is only one way to stay grounded. Life is full of twists and turns, successes and setbacks. How can you reach your God-given potential and achieve your dreams? With over four decades of reporting on the move of the Holy Spirit around the world, Stephen E. Strang has firsthand experience of how the Holy Spirit has led him on a remarkable journey of faith and a successful life. In his new book, Spirit-Led Living in an Upside-Down World, he will invest his true life lessons into the hearts of readers as he reveals his secrets to having a successful life led by the Holy Spirit. Go to booksbystevestrang.com to pre-order your copy today.